doing well tonight. Um, we did not have Thursday last night because I had company over last night. However, I'm just going to make up for it tonight. And there's a few subjects I want to cover. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page and uh, pull this up so that way I can follow along with any replies if anyone has one. Okay, I'm also going to edit this. So give me a second to get it edited. I'm going to go ahead and tell you the three things we're going to cover tonight. After I get it edited. Let's see. Edit the post. Now I'm doing it. Number one. Let's see. Mark this off. First thing we're going to talk about is surviving slow times. And slow times are generally when? During the winter time, right? Surviving slow times. The second thing is overcoming phone objections or sales objections, sales objections. But we're going to say phone objections because of the fact that uh, most of the time it's because you're not, you're usually getting people and talking to you about sales right in the beginning, and that's at the at on the phone, correct? Okay. Bundle up a little bit here, man. It's getting a little bit chilly down here in Virginia Beach. Okay, so overcoming phone objections. And then, last but not least, we're going to be talking about mentorship. A couple of people have asked me about mentorship and want to know what type of mentorships are available out there, and we can discuss those. Okay, Dodger game is on, and I'm watching you crazy. All right. Okay, I appreciate that, though. All right, so here we go. Hopefully your team wins. All right, so I'm escaping to the small window here now. And uh, hopefully we'll see stay on the page. Work on objections. Open a new one. Takes a little while to get this set up. 30 seconds or so, but once I get it set up, I can really get it rolling. Okay, here we go. Got it right here. We need to turn it on. And there we go. What's up, Michael? How you doing, bud? You can look at us. Tommy, Terry, you in the hospital? I hope you're not hurt. Is this something that happened or because of the fact that you're, you're a firefighter? Let me know. Jeff Gardner, how you doing, Jeff? How you doing, Carrie? Okay, so number one, we're going to be talking about um, surviving slow times. And being in business myself for 35 years, I have covered or been through a ton of slow times. A little more wiring here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I've been through a ton of slow times over the last 35 years. And what's kind of cool about the carpet cleaning business is it's almost, almost, I should say, recession proof. And why do I say that? Uh, why, why is it almost recession proof? Because a lot of people during bad times or bad economies will go ahead and have their carpets clean rather than replacing their carpets. So that, that's a good thing. And that being the fact, the case, you can kind of have, you can make it through those slow times. It seems like every time we had uh, oil embargoes, oil crisis, I should say, and or we had, um, you know, the bubble pop and stuff like that, we still did extremely well. And why is that? It's because we build up a good clientele and people clean their carpets instead of replacing their carpets during bad economies. But generally, what I'm going to be talking about mostly, and of course, and it both it applies to both scenarios. Uh, what about slow periods during the year? Maybe it's winter time, or maybe it's just a lull time. Maybe it's just something happened with the stock market, and people just kind of get a little bit leery throughout the year, and they're not as apt to have a service done as carpet cleaning. So how do you survive these slow times? Okay, let me address Terry here. Tommy says, they had to do a biopsy or something they found. on the front. Man, sorry to hear that, dude. I hope it all works out. Keep me posted, Tommy. I hope it all works out for you, man. I wish you the best. All right, and um, life is short, so you want to definitely take care of yourself. Take care of your health. Whenever they find something, take care of it. My father, they found um, some lung cancer in him, and he didn't take care of it. He was old school, and he ran into some issues, and then he passed away from it. So always take care of something whenever they find something. Not to scare you, Tommy. I'm just saying if you find things early, you can generally take care of it. Speaking of early, let's get back to talking about uh, surviving slow times. My number one thing is, is you should live under your means. So in other words, if you've got a lot of money rolling in during good times, like right now we have a great economy going, start putting money away for a rainy day. Unfortunately, at the end of the year, you kind of get penalized for that too. How's that? Because 
the government can step in and say, well, if you got money left over in the bank, we're going to tax you heavily on it. Well, then go ahead and pay off your truck. Pay off your equipment. Pay off your insurance for the following year. Maybe even your rent. If you do all that, you'll uh, January, February, March, your slow periods, it'll, it'll be a whole lot easier to weather. So live under your means. Pay off some of your monthly debts so that way you don't have those. And when slow times come, you, you don't have to panic. All right, and, and definitely don't live outside of your means. I could go out and buy myself a seventy-five dollars or $100,000 car, but I don't. I go out and I buy myself a used Acura MDX. They're $60,000 brand new. I buy one with low miles. I pick it up for $15,000, $20,000. It's like brand new, and they last 300,000 miles. You can get it for 75,000 miles, well-maintained, all the records. Why not? You see, I'm living under my means. And if you live under your means, it gives you more money. And my father used to say, it's not your income that determines your wealth, it's your outcome. So, uh, let's face it, you know, winter's coming, right? Let's see, well, let me see what Robert says here. I'm going to get back to winter's coming and used equipment. Robert says, the way this month is gone, the way next month is shaping up, I'm looking forward to the slow season, I'm tired. Ain't that the truth, Robert? Yeah, you tired of winning? I'm almost tired of winning too, pal. I know how you feel. So, getting back to the winter months... If you want, you know, those are times you can also go out and do some cold calling during that slow period. Or you can just take a break, like Robert says, he's kind of overloaded, and he, he looks forward to having that break. Can't blame him. All right, hey, how's, how's it going, Chris? Yeah, so live under your means, save your money, pay off your bills, and also treat your clients exceptionally well, build up your, your reviews, your repeats, it'll get you through slow times in the year, and it also gets you through slow economies. Build up that reputation. If you're a, a splash and dash, hit it and get it type of cleaner, guess what? You're probably not going to have long-term clientele. You're probably not going to do well during slow economies, rightfully so. And so what happens is people who, who don't have that mentality, who live outside of their means, who don't save any money for a rainy day, who, you know, who don't treat the clients completely right, what happens in the wintertime? Truck mounts and trucks come for sale. And people like you and me get great deals, don't we? So, remember, to survive slow times, the key is, is to go ahead and do all the things I mentioned. Live under your means, keep up your equipment, keep up your clients, save some money, Put some money away and all for a rainy day, and then before the slow period gets hit to the end of the year, go ahead and invest in something like paying off your insurance for the following year, pay off any monthly bills, maybe it's a truck or truck mount if you have any money saved up. Go ahead and do that. That way the IRS doesn't penalize you. Okay, so that's how you basically survive slow times. One more thing too, as we talked about last week, don't forget, was um, uh, what was it last week we just said? Oh yeah, diverse services. So if you add diverse services, then you can go ahead and you don't have to worry about it as much either. Because now you've got something during a slow time. If something is, is not popping like carpet cleaning, well, maybe tile grout cleaning is popping. Okay? Maybe rug cleaning is popping. In my case, maybe water damage, you know, depending on how many services you have. Or maybe, because like there's a natural disaster or something like, like a hurricane, uh, we'll have water damage that's popping. Or if it's in the summertime, during a lull or something like that, or anytime there's a lull, I've got pest control. So the more services that you have, the more diverse services, the more it can kind of prop you up and get you through those periods. And lastly, I'd like to say, there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with, yeah, I agree with that, uh, Charlie. No doubt about it, Tommy. We do wish you uh, and pray for you for a speedy recovery, pal. Hang in there and, and a good diagnosis, we hope. Anyway, I forgot what that last point was, was what I was going to say. Just make sure you save your money. Make sure you're prepared, live under your means, and you'll be fine when it comes to surviving slow times, especially if you add diverse services. And if you don't know much about diverse services, go see my Ask Me Anything Thursday for last week. It's up on YouTube, and you all can take a look at it. If you don't mind, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, at tmfacademy.com, you can go ahead and learn all the diverse services because we have all those apportioned for you. You can learn BLM, commercial cleaning, carpet cleaning, tile and grout cleaning, uh, carpet cleaning, upholstery cleaning, you name it, sales, service, starting a business, it's all there in tmfacademy.com. And when you need products, of course, a shameless plug, plug, 
tmfshop.net. Okay, uh, the second thing we want to talk about is overcoming phone phone objections. And what, why do I say overcoming phone objections? You know, whenever you're selling yourself, I don't care whether it's in real life, whether it's to, uh, um, if you're selling something inside of a home or something like that, you always have to overcome objections. And to me, uh, the, the number one place you're going to have to overcome objections is probably on the phone when somebody calls in. We had a big thread about that, right? Uh, somebody said, well, let me ask my husband or let me ask my wife and then I'll get back with you. And let's face it, the, most of the time they don't get back with you. So the key I found is, is you want to overcome the objections before they become objections. Because if not, you get to that awkward spot. Well, Mrs. Jones, you know, if I did this and did that, see, now you... Now you're getting to that awkward spot, but if you can get to it and say, you know, uh, you know, get to know them, let them know who you are, kind of talk about your features if they ask the price. If you're a total price shopper, you might just have to give them the price, and they might just leave and they might stay. I don't know. It depends on what your price is, right? So I like to build it up, get it built up. Let me go ahead and refresh this one more time. There we go. Okay, good. So it's still going nice and smooth here. So overcoming phone objections. Uh, and like I said, number one thing probably is people say, I'm going to get back with their mate and they'll get back with you. But if you built up enough value, if you built up enough, enough um, features and benefits to the client, if they've allowed you to talk long enough and they've got to know you, more than likely that's not going to be an objection. You know, more than likely the client's already called you, has made up their mind to have their carpets cleaned. They probably already discussed it with their mate. Hey, you know, I'm going to call around and have the carpets clean. They're looking pretty rough. Yeah, dear, I agree. They look terrible. You know, so there's spots everywhere. So I don't, I, you know, that's a good idea. Now, the mate generally trusts you to find the best value for the money. Not always the best price, the best value. And somebody's coming inside their house that they're happy with, right? So if they make that, uh, that's basically just an, uh, you know, a conversation stopper. Especially what that is. They're done with the conversation. If they make that conversation where i got to get, um, you know, I'll think about it for a while. Or I'll talk to my mate. They done stop the conversation. It's tough to bring that conversation back. So I find go ahead and try to go ahead and get them to uh, commit before that. Get to know them real well. Ask them what their name is. You know, tell them a little bit about yourself. So, well, you know, and, and they say, well, how much is your price? Well, man, let me tell you a little bit about our service first, if you don't mind. Since you're having the carpets clean, do you have any pets? See, you're starting to ascertain more things. Oh, by the way, we are pet odor experts. Hmm. Okay, all right. Oh, did you have any certain problems, Mrs. Jones, that you want us to address? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I've got this, uh, you know, this red stain over here on the carpet. I'm worried about it. I might not get my deposit back. Well, guess what? We're experts at that. And 99% of the time, we can get it out of there for you. And if not, we can either recolor it or we can replace that piece of carpet for you. You see, you're overcoming all the objections and you're building your value you're building your features and you're making them happy. Okay. Taylor Chapman. Now, before I go to, so that basically covers it for overcoming phone objections. Remember, I like to cover, um, you know, three subjects for 30 minutes. And after that, I'll kind of open it up and ask anybody, anybody's welcome to ask any questions. But how you doing, Taylor? Bit off subject, your new CRB. I'm going to buy a CRB, but don't know the difference between yours or theirs. Just want some insight on your new one. That's a very good question. When you say ours, and theirs, there's only two different types of CRVs on the market. And there's there's those that are made by the iPhone uh, plant in, in uh, China. Okay, we do sell those. There's also those made in Austria. Some people say Australia, but it's actually Austria. And near Germany. And we sell those also. And then we can get a whole variety of sizes and where they're built. And I'll tell you what, the gap is very close. The gap is closed in between them. They're both quality units. They're both good prices and you can't go wrong you buy them from us we throw in a lot of things we throw in a course regardless of whether you buy the Austrian whether you buy the Chinese you get the, uh, all, all the things that we offer with you sometimes we'll throw in some chemical I think we do throw in some chemical we throw in uh, a course from our tmfacademy.com and a few other goodies and we stand behind 100% so that's just something that people are trying to stop us from getting sales so they say well theirs is that Okay, well, well, they can't say that anymore because now we carry both of them. That's simple, Taylor. Hope that answers your question. If not, feel free to 
go further into it and I'll be glad to address it for you more okay all right so that's 10 minutes on each subject first of all we covered the over uh, surviving slow times and then we covered phone objections and what, what what about lasting for phone objections to we don't really have much time left for it to keep it within our 10 minutes what about when they basically say well the price is too high and maybe you build up all your features and stuff like that one last thing you can do and I've done many times is offer clients a first-time discount I'll tell you what mrs. Jones I'll be glad to offer you a first-time discount to try out our services to see you know how we're a quality company and I'll mention again how quality we are and based on what based on our large amount of five-star reviews based on the fact that we're a family business based on the fact we're going to treat you fair and honest I'm going to reemphasize those and I'll give you this discount it's a good way to hold them on to the phone right there offer them that first time discount but I'll let them know when I get there or even on the phone it'll be the regular price next time I just wanted you to see the quality of our service a lot of times that'll help you close the sale right there all right so let's move on to our last point and that is mentorship now you know mentorship has been around for a while and you you could do some things locally first if you've ever heard of score that senior core of executive retired executive something like that senior core of retired executives I think you can find that in your area they'll help you the problem is when you use them they can help you with some of your business things your plans and stuff like that the problem I found with score is they're not industry specific they don't really know our industry inside and out so I recommend you finding somebody who actually knows our industry let's take for example Joe Polish was in the industry for a while with Piranha Marketing he knew the industry he helped a lot of people yeah true uh, Joe never really built up his own carpet cleaning business he realized there was more money in mentorship back then you didn't have the internet you didn't have all the things you have now with truck mount forms and stuff so it was timing for Joe it was perfect timing he was able to help people help them improve their business he took marketing ideas from other industries brought them in filled them out and made them industry industry specific and a lot of people benefited from it and now he's moved on to a lot higher things good for him he had to adapt because mentorship got hurt by YouTube and all the things that we're doing right we have over 300 videos on YouTube over a couple million views so go to show cleaners are looking at it and if you don't mind please subscribe to our YouTube channel it helps and you'll get the uh, the videos right away whenever we do them we try to do you know a couple of good very informative videos to help you out technically wise and then we're adding these videos here that we're talking about okay let's see uh, let's see here and so as I was breaking it down there let me get back to it here for a second the mentorship uh, and then then came along what Howard Partridge right Howard Partridge comes along with phenomenal marketing basically it's just a rehashing of Joe Polish's stuff however what did he do he went ahead and he made it more industry specific and he built his own business by building a large business he was able to show people look I built a large business two and a half million dollars a year you can come out to my place I'll show it to you I'll show you how I did it so he was basically uh, by example even though the internet was starting to gain ground the fact that he had built his own business he could prove that he had what it takes to do it great alkaline rents Rob Brandon thanks Brandon I love that stuff and remember you don't need as much as you think you really don't it doesn't take much at all to get the job done so um, getting back to so first we had Joe Polish then we had Howard Partridge now there's been a few other you know smaller ones in between who have popped up and help out and stuff like that and then about 10 years ago TMF got started and we offered what was called a ride-along and people would fly in here a lot of people might not know that and I would go ahead and I would teach them the industry from A to Z for a whole week they would pay me they shadow along with me and you can still do that but it's pretty pricey but it's worth it especially now since we've gotten into so many other areas and gotten so diverse and our, our, our buildings so much larger now and, so, and our school so much larger and we're able to uh, facilitate learning and have more on hands than we've ever had before plus I still take you out in the field so remember I still have a boot camp where you can come uh, I'll teach you in the morning time and then in the evening I'll take you out and I'll teach you all the different diverse services in the field whether it's in my school or in the field most time it's in the field take you out in there 
and I'll show you how to do you know, carpet cleaning, upholstery cleaning, how to do sales, how to do up sales. I had a job, two couple jobs yesterday, and I just went out there to give a hand with, and I sold them for both over $1,000 a piece. Okay? So I know how to close sales. I know how to offer services, but you have to know how to do those services to be able to get those type of sales, right? How you doing, Vincent? Good to have you here, bud. Taylor, I'll definitely address that in a minute. Give me a second. It's all right. I don't mind because I'm almost done. Five more minutes. I'll have my three topics covered, and then I'll go ahead and open it up. We'll talk about the benefits with 10 inch versus a 15 inch and why I feel a certain way about that. That's a very good question, Taylor. But you might have to remind me in five minutes because these, uh, these um, messages move down real fast. Okay. So we had Joe Polish. Then we had Howard Partridge. They're both kind of moving off the scene a little bit. And now Chuck Mount Forms is coming on the scene. There's probably a couple of others out there, but I started the Ride Along uh, um, program. And I started the Ride Along DVD, which is still available. You can buy it at tmfacademy.com with our hot water extraction course. And it's very thorough, and you get that, and it helps you. It helps new employees. It'll help you too, and teach you how to avoid NMOTs, negative moments of truth, and how to build up a ton of positive moments of truth, PMOTs. And that way you can make these sales and you can retain these clients and get the maximum amount of uh, reviews, referrals, and repeats. And that isn't that what it's all about, right? The three R's. I'm very strong about that. And so, and then we also have our online course. So now you can go online and, and I can train you. Or you can just come here for a day or two and I'll help you out um, you know, in, in a shorter period of time. If you can't get along, get away from work not, not long, we can do it that way. And so I'd be glad to mentor anyone if you want to. If you're interested in mentoring, please contact me at Rob Allen at truckmountforums.com. Be glad to work with you. We actually have some mentoring programs that we don't advertise. I'll be glad to help you in any form or fashion, and they're very reasonably priced, and they'll help you grow your business. And I can help you grow to, you know, from zero to a million dollar business. I'm very confident with that. So if you want to be mentored, let me know. And, and anything in between. If you just want to be a one truck operation and do $250,000 a year, that's fine. I can help you with that. If you want to be a three truck, three to five truck operation and doing a half million dollars or more, that's fine. <clears throat> if you want to be, you know, a seven to ten truck operation doing a million dollars plus a year, I can help you with that also. So just let me know, and I'll be glad to help you in any form or fashion. Okay, all right. So basically, use my time up. So we talked about surviving. Let's just go ahead and recap. Uh, surviving slow times. We talked about uh, overcoming objections, especially phone objections. And uh, then lastly, we talked about mentorship. So remember, I can help you with mentorship. You can help yourself by maybe reading some books and or maybe making a list of all your benefits of your company, all the great features that make you different from other companies. Okay? And then for surviving slow times, you want to make sure that you're prepared for slow times. That's the key. Okay? If, if, if it's cold outside, you're going to dress accordingly, right? And then walk outside. You're not going to dress out and go out there in a short sleeve shirt and a pair of shorts on a 25 or 20 degree day, right? You, you know, so you want to be prepared for slow times. You want to be prepared for uh, winter months. And the way to do that, basically like I mentioned before, is live under your means, okay? Save money and pay off your debts. Anything you pay off, any monthly debt you can pay off, the simpler it's going to be for you to survive during slow periods. I don't care if it's your house payment, I don't care if it's your car payment, your truck payment, don't live over your means. Buy inexpensive vehicles rather than expensive vehicles, except when it comes to your truck and your truck mount. You're going to need you know, the best of everything for that. But, and then end of the year, pay down your insurance, pay down maybe some of your rent, stuff like that. Get you through the winter months if you're in the cold states. We're, we're semi in the cold, cold states. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and open it up. It's 9.30 now. First half hour, remember, on TMF Thursdays, if you'll join me, we'd appreciate it. At 9 o'clock every Thursday, I'm going to go ahead and break down three subjects, 10 minutes apiece, and then we'll go ahead and open it up to any type of question. Andrew Johnson, I really agree with your comment about diverse services, helping to minimize the slow times, but the challenge for me always used to be that I was a jack of all trades and master of none. I, I agree with you. I really had to stop saying that. Man, Andrew, you definitely, we're, hey, brother, we are the same people, man. We are definitely cut from the same core. I used to feel the same way. Focus on a handful of services that I could excel at. When I did that, talking about it last week, I was really, really stressed the fact, Andrew, that you need to learn the diverse service inside and out. 
There's nothing wrong with being a jack of all trades if you understand all those trades thoroughly from A to Z. You know, if you know everything about upholstery cleaning, let's face it, everybody in the, in the carpet cleaning business is, is, is basically a jack of all trades. If they're just offering one, two, or three things, if they're doing tile and grout cleaning, carpet cleaning, and upholstery cleaning, you've basically got three trades, right? It's all cleaning, but it's three trades. But didn't you learn upholstery cleaning real well? Didn't you learn tile, grout, and stone cleaning real well? So then you felt confident. There's nothing wrong with that. So you can get that out of your mind. If you think you're a jack of all trades and master of none, it's because you haven't mastered them. So really, you should be a jack of all trades and master of all. Any trade that you set out to do. So there's nothing wrong with uh, learning them and, uh, and offering the clients. But don't offer them the clients if you don't know what you're doing. Don't Do it at your own house. Do it at maybe at some friends' homes or something like that. Learn it first. Learn it at your shop. And then go out and offer it to clients. So water damage restoration basically ensures I never see a slow time. Fantastic opportunities for profit and huge risk of being a goat if things go wrong. Ain't that the truth, right? Right, right. So you've got to learn it. If you know water damage inside and out to a large degree, and if it's too big of a job, have a strategic partnership like I do with a larger company. I don't pursue all the water damage jobs out there. Usually I'll just pursue something $50,000 or less. If I got a monster job, I've got a strategic partner I can get with. Moving over to him. I don't have time. I've got a lot going on in my life as it is. How do you manage to work with your family? I find this to be very difficult thinking about going off on my own. Jeff, it is tough. Uh, I've got I've got eight brothers and sisters, and none of us can work together. Fortunately, uh, but now I've got a strategic partnership with my brother, um, Keith. But I've got other brothers who clean carpets who I got started. But we still don't have much of a relationship, especially when it comes to business. Personally, we still have some. When it comes to business, it doesn't. Because businesses, partnerships, and friendships. And family always wants more. So that's something we could talk about, ne Jeff, next week. I love to talk about that. Working with family. Let me make a note of that so I don't forget it. That'll be one of the topics I'll talk about. Let's see. Working with, how about working with family and friends? And partnerships. How about that? Yep, I'll address that next week. That's a very good point. Very good point. Okay, let's get to uh, Taylor Chapman. He, he mentioned, what's the benefits of the 10-inch versus the 15-inch on the CRB? Start off, ask off questions. Believe me, there's nothing wrong with it. You can ask me anything for the 30 minutes afterwards. Okay, I, I, I would say the benefits of the 10-inch versus the 15-inch. If you're not a very strong person, Maybe you might want a 10 inch. If you're doing a lot of homes and you're not going to use it for commercial cleaning or uh, something of that nature, you might want a 10 inch. If you want to cover more area, you might want a 15 inch, especially if you're doing it for commercial or if you do a lot of large homes. What if you're not very physically strong? Well, the 10 inch would be better for you. If you, you know, if you're strong and you don't mind bringing in the heavier weight because it's a lot heavier. Bring in the 15 inch by all means and do it. You're going to cover more area with it. But they're both going to do a great job. And it's just, just, I was kind of against the uh, 10 inch for a while. And I think I'm, people kind of mentioned that. But I just felt like I'm all about efficiency. I'm going to get in and get it done. However, I've also found that if you've got a lot of employees, it's something I've learned. The 15 inch to me probably is the better in most scenarios. But one thing I learned is when you have employees, they're more apt to bring in the lighter weight 10 inch then bring you in the 15 inch. I've had to get on them. I've had to write them up. I told them, look, suppose bring that CRB in there or I'll write you up. And guess what? I haven't had to write hardly anybody up since I've got the 10 inch models and gave them the option of having both since we started carrying the 10 inch models. So the 10 inch models are fine. They, they really are. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, like I said, it's just an efficiency difference to me. It's going to take you maybe another couple minutes to do the job for pre-agitation or something of that nature. It might take you five or 10 minutes more than it would have took you with the 15 inch. But you're more apt to bring it in because it's more lightweight. So it's really a person, it's really a personal decision. However, if I was doing a lot of commercial work, a lot of commercial work, if I'm using it for a VLM or something of that nature, I'm going to bring the 15 inch for sure. Maybe even a 20 inch to a commercial building. Who cares about the weight then? Because once it's on the floor and it's doing its job, it doesn't matter. And usually you're covering thousands and thousands of square feet. You don't want to cover thousands and thousands of square feet with a 10 inch version. You want at least a 15 or a 20 inch version, right? 
and covering more square foot is faster so I think that's the key right there all right so and remember we carry both we carry the Austrian models not Australian models we carry the Chinese models and the Chinese models and nothing wrong with them look at how well they've held up yes in the beginning five or ten years ago when they came out yeah they had some problems but they basically ironed all those problems out and now it's going fine and uh, as a matter of fact they've closed that gap but there's still people who want the Austrian. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. And that's why we offer it. Okay? We want to give the people what they want. It's like you and your clients, right? If your clients want something, basically you're going to offer that client what they want if you have it. So if people want a 10 inch, they want a 15 inch, they want a 17 inch, they want a 20 inch, we're going to cover the whole gamut for people so that way they can get what fits them. Because I've always said I'm a big believer, a big proponent. And selling people what they want, not what I want them to have. Uh, I'm on your shop site now. Which is the best CRB? Uh, and what's and which size, Taylor? And which size? Remember, we'll hook you up with a deal too. Uh, Jeff says looking for to buy a used truck mount or a basic bare bones mount. That what would you recommend if you were to start from bare bones or maybe a nice Simex or Orbit? Uh, we've got the or it's or bot. I'm sure that's what you're probably thinking about. We've got the ore bots in stock, and I've got some used ones, just so you know. Let me know, and I'll work out a price deal on one of those if you want. When I say used, generally they're just school demos. We have school demos that we use, and we'll be glad to sell those if you like. Uh, well, the 10-inch only comes in the Austrian model, Taylor. So when you buy it, uh, the pounder, renovator, whatever you want to call it, people make fun of the name. But uh, sometimes we, we put names on things just to cause a little bit of controversy because it gets us some free advertising in places. No, we're not. Yep. Okay. So uh, anyway, uh, it's basically the, you know the we call it the quarter pounder basically the 10 inch. So you can definitely use that <clears throat> and look in there. Go ahead and buy that, Taylor. I'll hook you up with a deal afterwards. We'll work you out something. Let me know if you decide to buy it, and, and I'll take take care of you. Okay. So getting back to Jeff. Let's see. How do you pronounce your name? Uh, Jeff Poljasic, I presume. Don't quote me on that. Did the best I possibly could. I bet you have to spell that name a lot, don't you, Jeff? That last name. <laughs> no wrong with that. Just saying. What's up, Chris? How you doing, bud? Uh, one is the Brush Pro. The other is the Pounder. Well, the Pounder is basically our version. And the Brush Pro. And just a little tip. They're both Austrian models. Okay? Ah, all right. How you doing, Michael? Good to see you, bud. Let's see, so can I encapsulate after hot water extraction on commercial CG and even on residential too? I'm going to probably upset some people by saying this. Neri, no, you cannot encapsulate. Yes and no. Yes, you can encapsulate, but guess what? It's not going to work as well because you're going to be diluting the product. The carpet's already soaking wet. It does not work as well when the carpet's wet. If you can get the carpet dry, go ahead and do it. I don't have a problem with it. But people who are mixing it into their into their pre-sprays it will give them the benefit of not um not have to worry about or crystallizing so they can vacuum it off that's good i like that and it will help a little bit but it's not going to give you that full full tilt that's going to happen especially on commercial locations where you want to take and clean with hot water extraction first you've got to get those carpets dry use air movers do whatever you have to do get the carpets as dry as possible that's why many times how you doing elmo doing fine bud Generally, I will take and clean the carpets, and then I will come back the following week. I'll set up something, and I'll build it into the price. Uh, or maybe I'll start in the morning and maybe take an hour break or something. We've got a lot of air movers, get it dry, and then encapsulate over it. Nothing wrong with that. And then I do interim encapsulation after that. So every 90 days or six months, however, how often they have it done, I'll go ahead and do an encapsulation after that point. So, yeah, I'm kind of against... Um, and capping while the carpet's still wet especially especially when many guys have not gotten the carpets as clean as they should have or maybe they're in a hurry after doing commercial or residential work if you're in a hurry and you leave behind some detergent you leave behind some pre-spray you leave behind some dirt and a lot of water your encapsulate's not going to work as good on and with all that diluting your product okay it's going to work better if it's dry even if all that stuff's present, but I still say rinse the carpet as fast as possible, I mean as thoroughly as possible so the carpets will dry 
as fast as possible. That's really, really important. Get those carpets dry as possible and then encapsulate. Okay? Maybe you could start and uh, you can maybe get start getting the rooms dry that you're done if you're inside of a home and you want to encapsulate afterwards. Or you could buy our our um, our our rinse and our pre-spray, the Rob Secret Formula, and especially the alkaline neutralizing rinse has encapsulability in there. And it's made to work with pre-sprays for hot water extraction and stuff. So see, they're synergistic, they're compatible. And so there's nothing wrong with that. Unfortunately, the majority of standalone encapsulants out there are not hot water extraction compatible, even though they say they are. Okay? Yeah, they can, so anybody can make any kind of claim, doesn't mean it actually works. So definitely keep that in mind. Try to get the carpets dry as possible or follow back up if you're going to do it. Or get a good product, like, in, in, um, like I said, our alkaline rinse. When I say alkaline rinse, remember it's an alkaline neutralizing rinse. It's only 8 pH. If it's even that, it's like 7, 8. So it's almost neutral as it is. So if you're using a 10 pH or, God forbid, if you're using a 12 pH pre spray, it'll bring it right down and you'll, and you'll be right back down to neutral. And you'll also have that encapsulating ability. And there's two different types of encapsulating. Remember, uh, there's film forming and there's crystallizing. So ours has the crystallizing built in, which is good. So it dries to a crystal and vacuums off and is compatible with hot water extraction chemistry. Unfortunately, a lot of these companies that take shortcuts, they're using foam forming. Maybe they have citrus solvents or something like that inside of it. Give you a hint. Or other, or other products in there that are designed to be foam forming and now they become too filmy and they don't do their job. Or they're made and designed to be followed up with uh, some type of bonnet. Okay, so you see the see the issue that you're running into, and I'll be glad to break that down in another uh, episode if you guys want to. Be glad to break that down. Interesting question stuff. Uh, just just for the record too, if you want to, if you're interested in the CRB, message me. Okay, message me directly. I'll be glad to help you if you if you need more help on that, Taylor. I'll walk you through it. I don't even mind talking to you uh, on the phone about it. All right, how do you feel about carpet color dyeing market? Good add on service. Uh, Jeff, I have a video on YouTube, and you should. And it talks about should you get into carpet dyeing, and it's very and I it, it, it breaks down all the you know the investment versus the ROI, you know your return on investment, and also the different the two different types of schooling that are out there, and so I say again. Jeff, I could do that again too. Let me put this down here. I'll do one here on dye courses. Dye courses. Good or bad. And no, it is not moonshine. It's actually just water. It's actually alkaline water. I'm a big believer in drinking alkaline water. Even though it is Friday night, right? <laughs> okay, um... So just briefly, Jeff, I'll be glad to tell you how I feel about it. Uh, I'll pull that video up when I get a chance. I can't reply with the video right in here right now. It won't let me. But carpet dyeing is dying. And why do I say that? Number one is they are taking and they are they are um, oversaturating the market with some of these schools that are going on out there. There's still a little bit of market, but the market is, is collapsing and is dying. Why is that? Because carpet manufacturers are putting out polyesters. They're putting out olefins. These triaxes and stuff. You can't dye those. And that's, and that's becoming the majority of the market. Also, carpet repairs are easy to do. And less expensive. You go inside a closet, get a little piece, put it in there, and boom, you can get rid of a spot. So I feel like the market is dying. However, there's still a market for it. And uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to have a dye course coming next May, I believe, with, with, with Melody. But... I'll be glad to post that up when I get some time and uh, look up that video, Jeff. Message me. I'll be glad. Or just go to Carpet Dye Courses, uh, uh, to YouTube, uh, Carpet Dye Courses, Truck Mount Forums. And it'll come right up and I'll be glad to help you out with it. Okay? Be glad to walk you through it. No problem at all. Let's see. Taylor Chapman, can I put your ProSafe guard in the wrench tank on the front of my Hydromaster CVS and run at the same time as your alkaline rinse to be more efficient. No, you cannot. You need to do it separately. Why is that? Because the rinse is stripping off 
um, suspended soils. It's, a, it's stripping off uh, suspended pre-sprays and all kinds of things that are inside the carpet. So your rent's stripping off the majority of that, okay, and only leaving a little bit of behind so, it's, so you've got that encapping ability. Then you can put your protector on afterwards. Very, very important. Uh, anybody who says they run their protector through um, their five-gallon tank, they're not being truthful. Sorry, it does not work because you got to get all the dirt out first. What are you going to do? Put the Scots Guard or your Protector or your Pro Guard or whatever card you use. We use our guard. Remember, it's available in TMFShop.net. We have two products. We have called Protect All, and then we have one that's um, the, the safe one, like uh, Taylor was talking about, Pro Safe. Eco Guard, I believe it is. You can go ahead and do it afterwards, but you can't do it before. If you do it before, you're putting it on top of dirt. What good was that? Okay? So, no, that would not work. And so, if you're interested, uh, Taylor, I believe you sent me a private message. I'd be glad to address it a little, a little further. I had to close it because it covers my screen. If, you, if anybody's interested in the, in the boot camp, let me know. I'd be glad to give them a price on it, the availability. They can come out here and I'll walk them right through anything A through Z, you name it. By the time you leave, you'll know how to do uh, carpet cleaning thoroughly. You'll know how to do upholstery cleaning thoroughly, rug cleaning, <clears throat> tile grout and stone cleaning, VLM, commercial cleaning. You know all those all those things. I'll help you learn thoroughly inside and out, and I'll be there afterwards to help you to work you run into any problems. What about using protector while in capping? Uh some some of them, that's a good point benson that's the, that's a very good question right there what about using protector while in capping i would not put it in with your encap especially if you're using a film former in cap where you want to be uh, following with a bonnet even if you're using a crystallizing in cap i feel like you should still bonnet because you're not getting all that soil out it hasn't had a total time to to emulsify or to you know really break down those soils or form a crystal around it so I recommend putting your protector down afterwards. You want to take, put a bonnet, nice cotton bonnet on your machine. Go ahead and run it over your traffic patterns, your heavily sold areas that are still left. And then go ahead and put your protector down. I still believe you should put your protector down afterwards, not during. Sounds good. It'd be nice and be nice and efficient, but you're just, you're having a clash of your chemistry. And you're having a clash of your cleaning process. So no. Always put your protector down afterwards. Well, well, some people say, well, my protector, I mean, my, my end cap kind of works like a protector in, in a sense. Well, yeah, it does some. Why? It's got polymers in there. But it's not going to give you that repelling. It'll help take, keep the carpets cleaner longer, but it's not going to give you that repellency that you need and what the client's looking for. In her mind, she's thinking repellency, okay? She's not thinking uh, the carpet's getting cleaner longer. She just expects that, right? How you doing, Gary? And Hans and Benson. What about rinse and protect all in one product? No, Jeff. Same thing, bud. Same thing. Uh, you know, if you're going to be rinsing the carpet, you, what are you rinsing? You're rinsing all the soil out. You're rinsing all your pre-spray out. So you can't be putting protector down on top of it. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work. You're, you're, you're best, it's not synergistic. Unless it's built into the rents, like ours is built into the rents, and that's going to give you some encapsulation ability, and uh, even some protection on it. But if you want something for repellency, you need to spray something down afterwards and sell the client on it. So it would be nice if everything was just an all in one product, okay? But generally, that's not the case. However, when you're using something like Rob Secret Formula Spite and you're using our uh, alkaline neutralizing rinse, they're so synergistic, they're built so similarly, yet you got a little higher pH, you got some grout master over here, and you've got the rinsing abilities over here with the encapsulating abilities. That is a great matchup. It's very hard to beat if, if possible to beat at all. It's probably one of the strongest and best combinations in the industry. Okay. <clears throat> How much is it for personal classes, did you say, if we come to your shop? Uh, go ahead and just message me. I have to look that up, Neri. And remember, we have a week-long course. Matter of fact, I will talk about that, too. Uh, I'll put that on here for another class, maybe next week. Boot camp. Industry boot camps. 
Now, you guys help me come up with, with, with topics the following week. Get these lyrics in. I'm having a problem with powder rinses clogging my machine and fittings. Any idea? Uh, well, two things. One is you're probably, uh, you're probably um, overusing it. Uh, number two is, does the powder have corrosion inhibitors in it? All of our products have corrosion inhibitors built in. We don't take those shortcuts and leave those out of there. Number three is, are you diluting it properly, Matt? By the way, nice to have you here. Are you diluting it properly? If, you're, if you do all those things right there, in other words, I'm giving a little bit of time. So you're putting your product in your five-gallon jug, right? I like to fill it up halfway with hot water first. Then I add my product. And most people overuse rinses, and you don't have to. It only takes eight ounces. Eight ounces of our product, okay? Whether it's our, whether it's our powdered acid, whether it's our powdered alkaline, eight ounces. You put it in there after you fill it halfway. You shake it up good. Fill it the rest of the way, shake it up, and boom, it's diluted perfectly, and you're good to go. And then you can meter it at two to three gallons per hour, and it'll clean like a champ and also give you that ability. Uh, so, Matt, are you using alkaline, using acidic when you're doing this? Which, which rinse are you using? Are you using our rinses? You know? Uh, I know there's good, it's just like anything else. It's like carpet cleaners. There's good carpet cleaners, and there's bad carpet cleaners. There's good rinses, and there's bad rinses. There's good pre-sprays, and there's bad pre-sprays. So a lot of those are, you know, a lot of those things are factored in there, and I don't know all the details that you're having there, but the key is getting them mixed up as much as possible. Chris says, I use rinse and a pump up and cause my chemical injection because my chemical injection doesn't work. That's fine. Uh, Chris, let me ask you a question. Do you rake it in afterwards or groom it in? I think it's important if you do that. Matt says, I filled a gallon jug in three scoops and shaken and left overnight. Um... A gallon jug? Why would you have a gallon jug? You mean a five gallon jug? Three scoops is way too much in a one gallon jug, depending on what you're using. What are you using, Matt? A one gallon jug maybe needs a, a half a scoop. That's it. I spray after I agitate. I spray after I agitate. Your rinse. But I'm just saying, do you take, okay, you just put a light, a nice fine mist down, I'm presuming, when you're done, and that's fine. But ideally, if you wanted to, it wouldn't hurt to groom it in there. Matt says using it an acidic rinse, and that's fine. But Matt, if you're just using a one-gallon jug, you only need a half an ounce to that one gallon if you're using our product. Okay, if you're putting three scoops in there, that's two, four, six ounces, way too much to a gallon. You're only using eight ounces to a five gallons. No, then add it to a five-gallon jug. Okay. Oh, I got you. I got you. You're putting in the gallon jug. Well, the gallon's just not going to give you enough. You know, it, it's going to fall out. Of, it, it, it can't dissolve because you don't have enough water in there for the concentration of the product. So I really like the idea of just filling the, the two and a half gallons halfway with hot water. Put in your three or four scoops. You can go three or two also if you want to. And then go ahead and shake it up. Then put your other in there and shake it up. And it'll blend up perfectly. We do it all the time. Groom daddy. I heard that, Chris. Yep, yep, yep. I don't really like grooming too much, but, uh, you know, we could talk about that sometime, too. I'll write that in there also for another topic. To groom or to not groom. That is the question, right? That is the question. To groom or not groom. That is the question. And that's a question we'll definitely cover. Matt, I dilute three scoops of your acidic rinse in a gallon jug, shake it, leave it overnight, and then add it to my five. You know. How's that working for you? I, I'm not a fan of that still. But, I mean, if it works for you, that's fine, Matt. But I, I don't know why you just don't mix it. We, we take, I'm running, you know, four or five trucks on the road all the time. We take just fill our five-gallon jug halfway with hot water, and, there, and, and it'll stay strong for, for, you know, for a couple of days, no problem. Put in our, you know, three or four scoops in there, fill it up the rest of it with hot water, shake it up. Leave it overnight that way. And then when you're driving, it'll help shake it up even more, right? Hmm. So we got our... Since our video got interrupted for some reason. Not sure why. Did anybody get an interruption in the video here? I've got it hooked up pretty direct. Shouldn't happen now. Grooming is mandatory. Uh, Nathan? Uh, no. I don't agree with that. It's not mandatory. I groom my wand when I'm putting in my, my backgammon marks. Or my shark teeth, some people call it. Or triangles, whatever you want to call it. 
That's my grooming right there. Grooming is not mandatory. <laughs> the guru does not like you. Yeah, well, that's just my that's just my my viewpoint. Remember, I've been doing it this way for 35 years. So for 35 years, I'm not going to change now. All my clients are used to you know the triangles or the backgammon look is what I call it. All right, these are for hacks. We well, can call it what you want, brother. Hey, I'm a 35 year hack, multi million dollar business. Call me a hack. Call me what you want. I don't mind. I've been called worse, even today. <laughs> you know, I'm always called stuff. It doesn't bother me. I don't let what other people, no offense, Nathan, I like you a lot, but, but I don't let other people define who I am or define my business or define why my future goals. Nobody does that but me. That's simple. I'm always looking forward. Now, I will listen to people and I'll take into consideration, but it, the, the, the beauty of living in America is I can do it my way, not other people's way. I love that. So I love living in America where I can do things my way, my business, especially as long as I'm treating them honest and fair and doing a good job. I know, Nathan. Good point, Nathan. I know you're, I, know, I figured you're a kid, but I figured I'd at least address it for the newbies. Okay? Your text tag, Jobs Day, HCP, and how do you go about doing a follow up? Yes, every, every, cust I don't know what you mean by tag jobs, but they all have their jobs through House Call Pro, and I go ahead and I let them know. Uh, we do follow up. We follow up a day or two later and we, with a phone call and with a message to make sure they were happy with the service. Very important to stay in touch with your clients. Very important. Yeah, I agree, Chris. I agree with you 100%, bud. Chris Austin, 80% of my customers want those. Hey, give the client the option. Show her both ways. Let her make the decision. I don't mind. Whatever makes you happy. All right, over the years, we've tried every handheld pump-up sprayers out there until I figured out that when you dilute powder products that they cause problems to sprayers. Uh, so now we use liquids only for pump-up sprayers. That's a good point, Oleg. I, I, I agree with that. Unless you really dilute them well. If you really dilute them well and you keep them up, it, it, it does help up, help a lot. I'm telling you, diluting it is, it is key. And not using too much of it and not allowing product to fall out of dilution. You know, you can only put so much powder into a liquid. It can only hold so much. Okay? And so, uh, and then if you're using cheap products, of course, then they're going to have a lot of fillers, and those fillers are going to fall to the bottom. They'll clog up any sprayer you got. So don't use low-quality products. I'm telling you what. Uh, formulators will do anything they possibly can to save money, Oleg. So uh, they'll use cheap products, and don't fall for it. And when using liquids, nothing wrong with that. That, that makes you happier. That's fine, but if you're using quality powder products, you're good. As long as you're mixing and diluting them properly, you're fine. Either way, though, hey, that's the beauty of America again. You can do it your way. Have it your way. I want to groom with no backstrokes. Okay. Yep, nothing wrong with that. Either way, Nathan. Home Depot, you just take them back and get a new one. Okay, that's true, Chris. Yeah, you're right. That is the, the beauty of that, right? No doubt about it. Uh, with these big box stores, these big companies. They stand behind everything. They're big enough they can absorb. You got a bad spray or something like that? Take it back to them. They'll make it right. Ah, at least they should. Well, it's kind of cool the way I've got this program set up. I'm going to close out here in a minute. Remember, I try to keep it at just one hour each time so I don't you know, bore everybody. And uh, People go on YouTube. I don't know if they're going to watch a whole hour. I watch so many analytics, and I notice some do and some don't. So... It's up to you. So I try to make it as interesting as possible and as informative as possible so that way people can learn and they're more apt to listen through a whole video. Maybe you just get a headphones, listen to the YouTube video if you don't catch these and uh, follow up on it. Now, I saw there was one more question was about to pop up. I've got two screens here. On one screen, it's real time and I get the real time questions, but they disappear very fast. And on the other screen here, I've got it where it's delayed and it takes a little longer for the question to pop up. And when the question pops up, I'm going to answer it. So I'm going to address that question when it shows up here in a second. Let's see what we got. Here it is. Uh, I guess that's it. Let's see. Did you sell a mixing jug with a hand crank? No, I don't. With a hand crank. You mean a hand pump? Is that what you mean? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, Nathan. You got me on that one, brother. Man, somebody asked another question. For some reason, it did not pop up. No problem, Bill. Anytime. Anytime. There was another question. Well, if anybody has no further questions, in one minute it's going to be 10 o'clock and I'll be here for an hour. But I think I started a little late, like 9.05. A 
And like I said, I apologize for not having it last night. You can count on it on Thursdays. Almost Thursdays, clockwork, but I did have some family over last night. And, of course, family comes first, business comes second. So that's why uh, I wasn't available last night, just so you know. But I'm going to try to keep this every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're over in California, of course, it's going to be 6 p.m. for you. Middle of the country, you know, it's going to vary by an hour or two. But 9 o'clock, Thursday nights. All right, so I hope, you, I hope everybody enjoyed this. We talked about, just to recap one last time, surviving slow times, overcoming phone objections, and last but not least, mentorship. And I'll be glad to help anybody with mentorship, be glad to help you with surviving slow times, and overcoming any objections when it comes to sales. Remember, we can help you through truckmountforums.com, where it's the largest industry resource out there. We're almost 2, two million posts. Just a monster resource. If you, anytime you research things, something about carpet cleaning, truckmountforums.com usually comes all the way to the surface, right? And all your search engines, whether it's um, Google, Bing, Yahoo, you name it, whatever you search, whatever search engine you use, it, you can definitely find any answer to find any question. And uh, so we have the forum there. It's not as active as the Facebook because Facebook is so instantaneous. And remember, please you know, subscribe to that, uh, to our YouTube channel if you get a chance also. And any of our other programs and uh, remember I'm always available generally by message or by uh, the 800 number or something of that nature if you reach out to me I'll get back with you and if you're gonna to come to town if you're going to visit please give me some advance notice and we're really excited because we added a warehouse today yes added a third warehouse I'm really really excited about it because now we're going to be offering truck mount installs and truck mount repairs and then we're gonna have a dedicated place uh, for a complete rug studio and some tile, grout, and stone we're going to lay down so we can have tile, grout, and stone classes. No problem, Bill. Take care, Chris. I appreciate it, man, guys. You guys have yourself a great weekend. All right? Take care now.